Fibers are spun to make thread. Thread, or yarn, is woven to make fabric. The spinner sends to the weaver yarn in hanks. These hanks are unwound by machine and the yarn rewound onto bobbins, small ones for the weft and larger ones for the warp. Yarn for the weft is wound onto the small bobbins called perns, which are kept in baskets holding a gross. Unwound from large hanks moving slowly onto the small perns spinning round quickly. When a pern is full, it is replaced by an empty one. This reminds one of the sewing machine at home. Each full pern is placed in the basket and an empty one put in the machine. These perns will be taken to the weaving shed and put into the shuttles of the loom. Threads for the warp have been wound from hanks onto the larger bobbins. Here's an upright frame containing about 400 bobbins. The thread from each is taken into a winding machine. This machine draws the threads from the bobbins through a reed which evenly spaces them and guides them onto a rotating drum known as the warper's beam. We'll just look again at this. Evenly spaced, the threads for the warp are wound onto the warper's beam. Before the threads are transferred to the loom, they are sized and then wound onto a similar drum called a loom beam. From the loom beam, separate threads are passed through the eyelet wires of the heddles, a small hooked tool being used. This tool is held in her right hand. The left hand is at the back, guiding the threads. The hook draws them through the eyelet hole in the wire, and the threaded wires are pushed along the heddles to the right. Heddles are threaded and perns all wound. Now, we're ready for weaving. This is a loom a weaving machine where warp and weft threads are interlaced to make fabric. Here are the warp threads slowly being drawn through the loom. Parts of the loom go up and down and backwards and forwards. Up and down. The heddles in action separating the warp threads. Backwards and forwards. The reed in action closing up the weft threads. And now the shuttle containing the weft in the pern. Here's a new pern being placed in the shuttle. It's a busy machine and often a noisy one. The shuttle flying backwards and forwards, interlacing warp and weft, using thread to make fabric. Perhaps if we have a diagram, we'll understand a little more clearly what's going on. That makes it a little easier. But let us go right back to the beginning. That's better still. Now we know where we are. Here's the warp threads that run the length of the cloth. And here's the weft, threads that run across the cloth. But the point is, how does the weft go over and under the warp? It's the heddles that will show how this is done. We'll bring them back and we'll see what job they do. Up and down, separating the threads. Now for the shuttle which flies across. It's followed by the reed which puts the weft in its place. The fabric moves on. Now we'll watch all those parts at work and notice specially how the moving heddles cause the weft to interlace the warp. Warp, weft, heddles, shuttle and reed. Each plays its part in the weaving. Here's some newly woven linen. The actual weaving is done but the fabric is not finished yet. This is called loom state material. The men are closely inspecting it for flaws.
After inspection, it is stored to await final treatment. It has to pass through a number of finishing processes, the first of which that are shown are pre-shrinking and scalding. The linen is guided over rollers into a vat containing a solution of caustic soda. It passes slowly through this solution. And between the rollers, which, acting like a ringing machine, squeeze out the caustic soda. The linen is folded onto a trolley, which is used to take it onto its next stage. Scalding. To clean the cloth and remove the caustic soda, the material is washed and scalded, passing a number of times through the hot liquids in the washing baths. It's cleaner and whiter now. The caustic soda, which would eat away the fibers, has been removed. It's ready for bleaching and dyeing. More rollers and more vats, this time containing bleaching liquids. Again, between rollers that squeeze out the surplus liquid. And folded onto a trolley. It's even whiter now. The linen is washed again. It soon passes into a series of vats containing dyes. The dye becomes part of each individual fibre in the fabric. It should not be removed by washing or faded by light. Sometimes it may be taken through the same vat several times in order to produce the desired shade. When this has been obtained, the fabric is ready for drying, calendaring and folding. For drying, the cloth passes over a battery of steam-heated rollers. These drive out the moisture. The linen leaves the rollers, once again to be folded. It's ready for ironing or calendaring. The linen passes between glossy steel rollers under pressure. It now has a very attractive gloss and is folded very carefully. Some linen is folded right along its length. A machine draws in a single width of the material and sends it out through rollers doubled. In it goes single width. And out it comes doubled. It's folded yet again, but this is the last time. Linen almost ready for dispatch. Yard lengths of it are being counted. The store to which linen from the looms, vats and rollers comes and where the orders for it are dispatched. Material of lovely colours and firm texture with its own special sheen. In a word, fine linen.